Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, what is happening in Cameroon? Our guest is Guy Fugap, who is the coordinator in Cameroon for World Beyond War. Guy, welcome to Talk World Radio. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, thank you for coming on. I think we have a, a connection that's working now. We've tried a couple times here. Uh, how did you get started in working for peace and against war? Yes, the work for peace started a long time ago, depending on my family's uh, situation, because I was grown up in a family where sometimes there was no peace. There was no peace. And the parents were used to be quarreling as, as many times as possible during the day. And when I was still seven, eight years, I was thinking I can do something to stop this uh, issue. And when this was happening, I was used to say, you should stop, you should stop. And then, and uh, step by step, I, I realized that they were like afraid of my position while they were having a dispute and they were starting considering my presence when they had an issue when they had an issue when i was there they will make sure that they do not they do not because they were afraid that i will react and step by step i realized that they were living better they were they strengthened their relationship because uh, I had uh, an influence towards them. That makes me believe that uh, I could even take this, uh, this capacity I had to the community and to help uh, in the community to solve lots of issues that were happening in the community because in, within the human means, there are always problems, there are only issues. But I realized that the way people were using to solve their problems were like using violence. And I was thinking that we should, all, we should only talk. We only need to talk when there is a problem. That was my perception. When there is a problem, whatever the problem is, talking is enough to, to, to resolve it. And this perspective make people in my surrounding starting trusting me in sort of a lot of situations even that uh, even so when there were problems uh, in the community with other people when i was sitting there they will not kick me away as they used to ask children to leave they were like let this boy sit there and see how we are managing the the, 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 the crisis and from there, I even learned to be with elder people at a younger age so that I understood some skills, some ways, some abilities to handle issues without uh, violence, only by talking. And this brought me to think that uh, I can even uh, make grow a movement that I can lead to let other younger people than me learn about how to handle situation, tense situation without uh, force. Yes, this is how the history started. Very, very interesting answer. So you can make peace within a family and a community, maybe within a country. Uh, for people who don't know very much about Cameroon, what should people know about its, uh, its history uh, that would help them understand your situation? Yes, Cameroon is, is located in Central Africa. It's a country in Central Africa, uh, which in the past was colonized by the, by the German, in, well, colonized by the German. And after the, the First World War, the Germans were to go out from the country after the decision by the UN. And since the Germans had to leave several countries in Africa, the countries like uh, uh, France or Great Britain were to replace Germany in the administration of Cameroon. 
So the administration of Cameroon by France uh, was in the eastern part of the country, which is 80% of the, 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 the country. And since Nigeria, were, in Nigeria they were already Great Britain, they had to govern or administrate the southern part of uh, Cameroon, or let's say the western part of Cameroon, which is 20% of the, the, the country. And from there we have two systems functioning in the same, the same country until the country has, was, has the independence in 1960. So in 1960, Cameroon became independent with two federal states, with two states, one state in the Francophone zone and another the Anglophone zone. So the, the two parts of the country have to unite, they have to unite and make one country with two languages two languages, official languages that are French and English. And it's happened that uh, this duality is today a source of the conflict we, we have today as uh, the, the English speaking parts of Cameroon is uh, repeatedly uh, asking for uh, better integration, better consideration in the national territory because the since the independence, the presidents of the republics, two that we have had already, came from the Francophone uh, side. And uh, the English speaking parts uh, is claiming that there is like marginalization in the way they are integrated in the national community, the national territory. And at the same time, there have been lots of uh, governance issues. Lots of governance issues, which does not consider uh, real uh, population issues. That the, politi the, pol the, the politics is what is governing, and there is no benefits at the community level for people. And that's why the English speaking part start uh, asking for more, for better conditions for more integration in life. And the uh, reivindication started with uh, some corporations like the teachers, the lawyers, who were asking for a, a good system or Anglo-Saxon system of education or of justice that uh, they could apply better in their context. And the reaction to this uh, quest was violent and it's all turned around and today we are facing uh, unstoppable uh, crisis because within the reivindications there are separatist groups who came in and now uh, asking for independence of their part that is the english speaking part they are asking the independence of the the english uh, speaking cameroon which the government does not accept. And not only the government does not accept, they do not even accept that there are discussions around the, the, the form of the state because at the same time, some voices are asking that to come back to the, the federal, the system of federalism that we should have two federal states or the regional division we have now can be considered as the the federal system, because naturally we have 10 regions in the country, two of which are anglophone and eight are francophone. And the, some people are saying that we can function with 10 federal regions and giving more power to local uh, regions so that they can better administrate themselves, which is not at the table of the discussions for now. So this is how the conflict uh, started, and it's now going all around. And and you, Guy, you speak French and English and work in both parts of the country? Yes, I'm from the French-speaking part, so I speak French. And as I think every Cameroonian should do, 
should speak both languages. This is how I think yep. integration in Cameroon should be. That's why I speak English and I speak French. And in the English speaking part of the country, what percentage of the people want independence? Is it the vast majority or is it only a very small number of people? Actually, uh, there is, it is a small number of people that is asking uh, independence. Large majority of people in the, um, in the English speaking part are asking for better conditions, better government, better integration, better consideration. And there is a small group of people asking for independence. And there, there is violence in Cameroon. There are terrorist groups. Uh, is there violence related to this division between English and French, or, or is it a separate issue? The, the, the violence is related to the a separate issue because those committing uh, suicide, murders, and, and all killings are those uh, asking for independence, and in front the, the, there is uh, government force, the government uh, military, who uh, also react and try to to find them where they are hidden and also uh, kill them often. So uh, the terrorism is not only in the, in the English speaking part of Cameroon. In the northern part, to the far north of Cameroon, which is French speaking, there is also terrorism, but this time by Boko Haram. Boko Haram, terrorist group that came from the neighboring country, Nigeria. So they were in Nigeria since uh, 2012, they were having attacks there. And by 2014, the same terrorist group start attacking in Cameroon with their Islamic ideology that the girls should not go to school, uh, they do not like uh, the, 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 the way the, the, the people population uh, believe with the traditions and all that. So they have the, the thing that the Islamic uh, uh, education is what should prevail. This is what we were thinking at the first. But it happened that later we not, cannot even uh, clarify that this is the, the, the what they want because all is mixed, they kill for no reason, even uh, when families are not at school, they come and they burn houses. Meanwhile, if the ideology was what we were thinking at first, they would have maybe limited to, to schools, to let people out from the school considering that this is not the type of education they want but instead they burn everywhere they kill everywhere so we do not even uh, understand what they want but the from now the, the it had reduced it had reduced it's not uh, still uh, uh, grave as it was in 2014 2016 but the attacks are still there. People are still dying, suffering in the far north of Cameroon because of uh, the Boko Haram terrorism. And, and what are you able to do to, to change this situation? What are you working on? First, before I built a movement of a world beyond war in Cameroon, this is very new, I was... Uh, working with uh, the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. And I still work with the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom in a number of projects. So the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom uh, started even before the crisis uh, escalated. Yes, they started by adopting a preventive position that we should work on prevention seeing how the conflict was damaging the neighboring countries. We were thinking at that moment, we were in 2012, 2013, 2014, thinking that it is better that we, we take appropriate measures to prevent our country, our country of being uh, targeted by terrorists, by conflict and all that. 
And the message was not very well understood by the government in particular because they were thinking that Cameroon was living at peace, so no, no need to, to work on prevention. And the tool used by WILF was the, the resolution 1325 of the UN Security Council resolution, which is about women's participation in conflict prevention, peace building, protection of human rights in terms of conflict interest. So the project was about uh, developing, helping the government to develop the national action plan of that resolution, which happened in 2017, finally, because we conducted earlier a, a study, a baseline study to assess the impact of the conflict of, uh, of armed conflict on women and girls and which uh, shows that there is a lot of impact when conflicts uh, arise. There is a lot of impact on the education of girls, the health care, and the security at large. So that is why this uh, made a, uh, concrete uh, areas for the National Action Plan for Cameroon. And the challenges uh, came after with the implementation, which was not uh, really effective. That is why today the NAP National Action Plan expired, and we are conducting consultations to uh, help the government adopt a better national action plan with better strategies to implement it so that uh, it can really help women participate in peace building processes in Cameroon to help this uh, issue. So another, another project is about uh, uh, mobilizing actors for a, a sincere and inclusive dialogue, because a dialogue is needed as this uh, far in our country regarding the, the, the conflict. Dialogue is needed. So the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom have also uh, formed a platform of uh, about more than 100 organizations who are calling for a ceasefire, calling for a ceasefire and setting conditions or finding proposals for a concrete, sincere and inclusive national dialogue. Because uh, in 2019, there was a dialogue, which according to all analysts, stakeholders, was not a good dialogue because even from the dialogue room, there were still were atrocities ongoing in the field because uh, some key actors who were supposed to at the dialogue table were not absent, some are still in prison because of these crisis issues. Uh, we think that it is good they are released to be part of the peace processes, the dialogue processes. So these are some of the conditions on some issues we are working on so that can that can contribute to to bring back peace in our country. Uh, maybe lastly, lastly, I am trusting on the world beyond world that have been created in Cameroon, and uh, there is a problem on education, education. War, as we notice in our country, is something that we have to destroy from the mindset. Yes, this is what the world beyond war is wanting to bring in the, in the initiatives that are already existing. So we want to put emphasis on the education in a way that people understand that it is good to dialogue instead of uh, taking arms when there is an, an issue. Are you getting more young people involved through that work? Yes, I consider myself as young. That is one point. <laughs> and uh, in the world beyond war, they are 80% of younger people, younger than me, that uh, I think they need to be trained on uh, how to use peaceful means, nonviolent means, to solve any type of, of crisis, of conflict. Not even up to armed conflict. Even disputes among people, we need to find uh, 
a peaceful way, non-violent ways to to handle it. This is uh, well, there are also uh, elder people in world beyond war, age people who, uh, with their experience, will have to guide the younger generations on how to educate, how to educate. Because education, we are talking of now this state, is not only uh, concerning younger people, it's concerning everybody, including the leaders. Because the leaders are even those who need more education, like uh, no one else, because uh, they have every means to stop wars. They have every means to stop wars, and there are those who are still fueling conflict. You see, we have to educate yeah. also uh, young people about the human value, because uh, in the midst of all those crises, there are innocent people dying, there are children dying, there are women dying. There are, these are lives that are lost. Yes, you think uh, no matter what are the positions, no matter what are the ideals, no matter what you are looking for, there, there are better ways to look for, for, for what we want. There are better ways to, to let our authority reign as a government. There are better ways as those separatist terrorists, there are better ways to, to express their, their, their needs and their willing to have what they, they, they want. So this is what we find ourselves at Young Beyond World to contribute to this type of uh, education mediation among conflicting uh, parties. Gifugap in Cameroon, what is known about the guns and other weapons uh, used? Does anyone know where they were manufactured, where they went, how they got to Cameroon? I, I'm assuming that Cameroon does not have a lot of weapons manufacture, that the weapons have come from somewhere. Yes, that is the, the big, uh, big question that no one can really answer. No one can really answer to the question where the arms come from. And the, the arms used by the Boko Haram in the Far North are very huge uh, war artillery weapons. It means that they are manufactured by a, uh, a company that is made for that. And uh, we do not know how they, 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 they come across the weapon. So it uh, appears sometimes that the Cameroon is the road to rally uh, many countries with the sub-region. And this, at the moment, there, was, there were arms going from Libya to uh, maybe Nigeria and have to pass from Cameroon or the way around, how to pass through Cameroon. And it happens that uh, some of those harm in Cameroon are deviated and we don't know from where, where they go. And we assume that those arm are used to fuel uh, this conflict. But anyway, those are illicit weapons because they, they do not, uh, they are not transferred in the, the legal way. Another, uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, no, no, continue. Okay, so in, in the, the confrontations that the, 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 the armed groups have with military, when they kill the military, they also take their arms. When they kill the, the, the soldiers, the, the, the national army, they also take their arms that they, they use. This is another source of having weapons. And they, there are arms manufactured uh, locally, which are not uh, professional weapons, but they, they, they are made at the local level by any uh, manufacturer that are not uh, recognized by the, 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 the government. They, they, there is a law that even prohibited the manufacturing of those uh, local weapons. Yes. And they are used to, by those uh, separatists too. So we, we know, Gay Fugap, that 
when the United States and NATO countries uh, overthrew the government of Libya several years ago, weapons spread to a lot of neighboring countries. Uh, and we know that most of the weapons in the world come from about four or five countries, uh, and the first among them, the United States. Uh, it, it seems that, that one thing people in some of these big wealthy countries could do would be to oppose the, the export of weapons. Would, would that be helpful? Yes, we, we know that there the, are uh, military agreements with those countries. Cameroon has a military agreement with those countries. In terms of conflicts like now, they will even receive uh, support, like they call, support from those uh, armed manufacturer countries to train the military, to provide with arms, with, with any sort of support that can help the, the government handle the, the terrorism. So they, they receive a lot of support. And the, the government even buy weapons from those uh, those companies, capital companies from those uh, countries. And I, I remember that uh, when there are there were lots of killings as in the, in the southwest region of Cameroon, the U.S. even threatened Cameroon, Cameroon government, to make sure there are no more violation of human rights by the, the militaries and they were threatening Cameroon that not to give them more support if they do not uh, clarify uh, the situation of the killed people. Yeah. Guy, we have about one minute left. Uh, I know people can find the Cameroon chapter of World Beyond War at worldbeyondwar.org. Uh, what else? Where else can people go to to stay in touch and learn more and and uh, find out what you're you're up to in the future? Yes, I, it is easier to locate us on Facebook. We are setting a Facebook page uh, called Cameroon for a World Beyond War. This is still a very new Facebook page that we have created and everything we do, we have to put content on that page. And there is also a Twitter account that we have just created too. We are going to, to share with you so that uh, you can go wider because you know from where to find us. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you very, very much. We've been speaking with Guy Fugap, who is the coordinator in Cameroon for World Beyond War. That website is worldbeyondwar.org. Guy, thanks for coming on Talk World Radio. My pleasure. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.